It's Storage Server Sunday, and today we're going to be replacing the PDB in the Dell T620. And I'm going to take a chance here to talk about some logistical planning in part of our multi-part series on storage server setup configuration and how you can create a high-performance storage server that will scale with your needs based upon where you're at and where you think you're going. Before we get anything planned out here, I need to get this puppy slapped in so I can get access back to my files because this speaks to a key piece of your hardware assessment, and that is the H of your hardware should play in quite a bit to your decisions on when it's time, and it probably is time, for me to consider moving off of the T620, a almost 13 year old platform as of this time. Been a great server though. And even though I bought this and it's new, I can definitely see that it's seen quite a few miles itself. Let's get started. And I have absolutely loved the Dell T620. I've had this since 2018. This is not the first Dell T620 that I actually had. I had one before that. And I had a Dell T320 before all of those. But these are really great systems. Uh, there is a lot of very serviceable parts in them. However, it would be about $200 from what I can see to replace the motherboard on this. And it's just forestalling more problems that are likely around the corner is these devices have aged a lot in the past almost 13 years since their introduction. So hopefully what we're looking at is really just a problem with the power distribution board. Ah, the ancient art of debugging your servers. And I have literal bugs in my servers, unfortunately. Uh, let me know in the comments below if that's something you have also. I do hope that it's just the power distribution board. I am not sure. I, it would be impossible for me to tell. Uh, the 12 volt light does come on on the T620 motherboard. So I believe that it's probably going to be okay with just replacing this. The lower half definitely doesn't get uh, power to the upper half is what I do know because usually the iDRAC and the baseboard management system, when it's successfully powered on, does light up and blink up. And you can tell that just by looking at the back of the system. And I can really tell the age is getting up there on these parts. I actually, while I was plugging this in, broke a piece of plastic. Luckily, it's not a cru crucial piece of plastic, but uh, it's just fragile. And the, the age of the system is not working for it at this time. After a lot of attempts back and forth, I don't understand why the 12 volt light is still showing up on the motherboard but I have determined it actually is most likely the motherboard that has failed, which highlights one of the points that I mentioned very early in this, which is IT modernization as part of your strategy. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about that towards the end of the video, but for right now, I'm in a triage situation, so there is a remedy. This is all complicated a lot by the fact that one of the reasons that I loved the T620 was because it has 32 2.5 inch bays, which I've been utilizing for 16 one terabyte SATA Evo 870s and also eight 800 gigabyte Toshibas. Those are SAS, those are super high performance. Both of these are operating as special VDEV types inside TrueNAS. So if you're aware of how ZFS uh, handles data, you can't just take your data easily out of that. Now, I do have a solution. It's just a very not ideal solution to get back to accessing my data. JBOD number three at this point has to come on. I decommissioned, well, I mean, it's actually not decommissioning. I just took the hard drives out and I'll replace it with the hard drives from the uh, T620 to get the TrueNAS instance running instead of the Proxmox backup server that was running prior. So I'm gonna be using the R720XD it does have three PCIe slots that I'll be able to utilize for putting in three SAS HBAs, and that'll allow me to connect to the three JBODs. 
Not ideal, but it will allow me to get back access to the data. Let me know in the comments below, have you ever ran into something like this? So I'm gonna take these two disks out of here that were running off the internal SATA headers. And these are the boot drives. They're a RAID 1 array of drives. They're older, so I make sure to RAID 1 them, of course, for the TrueNAS operating system. So of course I forgot to mention, but I've had this unplugged the entire time I've been doing all this. If you're working with anything high voltage on your racks, make sure you do the same also, just for your own safety. And I'm gonna get the remaining cables disconnected here. And that is a lot of cables that were jammed in that arm. Each one of these arms typically has quite a bit. That's why cable management arms for a server rack. Great idea to keep the clutter down. So this JBOD and this JBOD currently house the data. And this JBOD is used for kind of scratch disk activity when I need to format drives or do temp stuff. So this is where we're gonna be putting the 24 drives that are SSDs and it does work with SAS and SATA, so that works out good for that. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull these cables back because right now the way that they're set up, okay, so this one's actually spanned up here already, so I can leave that one attached. I just need to fit in the other two cables, cables, cables. So we have a network cable, we've got several gigabit cables. Those are gonna be fine for me to just leave attached here. So I'm gonna coil these up, but I need to get them pulled up higher. Okay, so let's see where we're at here. So we've got one set of SAS cables already over here. So now I'm taking out the two SSDs that are the Proxmox backup server and we'll swap these SSDs with the TrueNAS SSDs. And then luckily Linux is very uh, easy like that. We'll be able to just boot it right back up. So one of the cards that I've got for this is going to fit inside this little carrier over here. Let me see which one's number one for this. Slot one is at the top. There we go. And then these next two I'm gonna put in here are already empty spaces. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and plug in this first one over here so that I can, it's a little bit hard to get it to fit. Okay, so that's in there now also. All right, everything looks good here. So I'm gonna go to the back and get the rest of this done. All right. I'm not gonna push it all the way in, that way I have easy access to back there. Okay, and we'll get these drives swapped in now. So swapping over to the R720XD is a solution that does work for me to be able to get back access to my data. However, now it presents me with yet another challenge and that challenge is that I've got the machine that was running my Proxmox backup server now running my TrueNAS instance. So this leads to, of course, inability to access my tape library. So I've got more servers that I can get involved with here, or I can just take down one of the two arrays that I've got 
and reset that. That's probably going to be the best thing that I can do. And then just create a very generic ZFS file system and copy the files over to that. And we've got an awful lot of unscrewing of hard drives to do here. These SSDs are going to take a long time to get unscrewed. When I said I went pretty heavy into VDEVs, special metadata VDEVs especially, boy, did I mean it. And they're really performant, but wow, a lot to unscrew. I know people like getting the noise, so let's bring some noise. It's like a jet. Oh my God, that took forever. Ooh. Well, looks like we are booting back up, so we're about to get access back to the data. All right, and I'm gonna have to reconfigure the web interface, but that's kind of to be expected. That's another reason that it's great to have a KVM access for something like this. Yay, finally I'm in. And now the big one, let's check the storage arrangement. And it's back, perfect. So, sweet. And I am now back into my storage. Yes, love that. So I can go ahead and start planning out what I'm gonna do next as far as creating yet another data store somewhere on some devices with some drives and starting to move these files over so that I can then get rid of the arrangement that I've got and come up with something for the new storage server that's going to make even more sense. So this has been a lot of hardware based maneuvering, shifting things around to get to the point where I can access my data again. And definitely being now reliant upon the R720XD and not having it running as the Proxmox backup server is also suboptimal because that's where I housed my tape library and the backups for everything that was my second tier of backups. So that's not really good either. So I'm gonna have to rethink this. We're gonna be buying some new hardware and I'm gonna be talking through some of the things that I'm doing as far as putting together an updated storage server. We're gonna redo the analysis. This works and it worked good, however, we can see that the reliance upon one server here for my primary active data, even though there are two pools of it, and also at the same time, the fact that I really, really had way, way too many special VDEV data types led to problems. If I didn't have a third JBOD here, things would have been pretty hard to correct. Luckily, I did have that third JBOD, but this is an insane amount of disks to have. So do consider this if you have something like a T620 with 32 bays in the front, Granted, that's probably one of the cheapest or best ways to go about creating some really high-speed VDEVs, but also at the same time, it comes with some trade-offs. And since it is a significantly older device that has fragility that just is native to these systems as they age out past 10 years, it's definitely time to consider what your upgrade plans look like. 
I can't imagine myself buying anything that is a PCIe Generation 3 system at this point in time, so we'll be looking at PCIe 4 generation systems when we do our storage server build out. I hope you're excited for that. There will definitely be more content on that. And let me know your stories about your storage backup nightmares and problems and challenges in the comments below. Thanks, everybody. Have a great one. Check you guys out next time.